Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode eight of A Brew With You. I am your host, Blake Mickle, accompanied by Danny Barajas. Hola. <laughs> that was Spanish for hi. What? Yeah. You've never said hola. Never. 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 In the history of my life, no, I, I find don't, that hard to believe. I, I don't know if I ever remember you saying hola. I probably said it once or twice. Hola, hola, hola. In passing. Mm, how you doing today, Danny? Uh, I'm doing grand. This evening. We are shooting pretty late tonight. This is a late shoot for us tonight. And this is a Saturday edition shoot. We're shooting early for you, people, because next week is Thanksgiving. We're going to give lots of thanks. I'm going to be out of town, and Danny has been crazy work schedule. He has a crazy work schedule right now. Always. And uh, we we found a, a small little window here on a Saturday night. It's about that big. That big. If you're not, if you can't see the, if you're not watching the podcast, I'm gonna Danny, do it in 3D. If you're watching, we can sh- we can shoot in 3D and post 3D on YouTube. You know that they have 3D capabilities. I did not know that. How have we not been shooting in 3D this we need entire to get, time? Hey, if you support us, uh, me on Patreon, we can get a 3D camera and shoot this in 3D for you today. Isn't that crazy? That is nuts. Beer in 3D. Beer in 3D. That's right. My taste buds would be in 4D. I don't even know if that's possible. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes. Um, remember the show Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, very hit or miss show. Good episodes, though. I love the, uh, I forget the names now. I'm, you know, if you watch this podcast, you know I'm so bad with names. Every episode. You have Meat like, Wad? No, I'm talking about the uh, aliens, like the, oh, the Atari aliens. Okay. Um, uh, I know Dead Mouse, the DJ, he has a tattoo of it on his neck. Um, one of my favorite quotes was, Classic you, Dead Mouse. you pathetic. You pathetic humans in your lousy third dimensions. Yeah, we have five thousand. <laughs> yes, five thousand dimensions. <laughs> no, I always remember that quote. <laughs> Aliens win every time. They it's do. Not fair. They do. If you are joining us for the very first time, I brew with you is a show where one of us will bring in a beer that we've never had before, while the other person picks the location where we drink. I brought the beer today, so Danny, where are we drinking today? Okay, so for those of you that have watched the show and those of you that haven't, uh, Blake and I hail from Chicago. Chi Town. Where, for even though you're not from Chicago, you are probably well aware of anybody you know from Chicago's tw- uh, Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts and how much they express their distaste for Chicago weather on social media. Because Big deal, it- Blake, on Twitter. <laughs> because it changes so erratically. So last week we had what, like 60 degree temperatures, and today. We are now in the 20s, and it's snowing. Mm. Mm. Pretty standard. Mm. Pretty standard. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Even though it's like the first like three days of winter, I would like to escape that already. And I would like to drink in a desert paradise. Can we go to Vegas? <laughs> Anywhere but here right now. Sin is City. So, so welcoming right now. Vegas on the count of three. Vegas on the count of three. One, two, three. Vegas! Vegas! Oh, feel it already. Big lights, it ain't gonna set my soul, I'm gonna set my soul on fire. Oh, Elvis had to happen, sorry. Did I, did I ever tell you I played Elvis one time? I had to be Elvis for a charity, not charity, it was for, it's a long story, What I had, but I had a, I got the outfit and uh, got 200 bucks for just uh, nice. talking to Elvis for one time, it was fun. I lip-synced Elvis in a fourth grade talent show. <laughs> That's a real story. What? That's a real story. How, how'd it go? Uh, awesome. I was you got 50, the hair for Elvis. If I was fifties. Yeah. I was fifties Elvis, so the hair was really long and slicked back, and I was wearing like you oh, know, oh my god, a well, slick suit. See, I did the the heavyweight seventies um, Elvis. Seventies Elvis. Yeah. I, mean, I would rather do fifties or sixties Elvis. No, seventies Elvis. Seventy L- or yeah, I mean, uh, late sixties, early seventies. I think. Yeah. Where's my parents when we need them to yeah. tell us all the Elvis? We're history. Elvis fans, though. I mean, I grew. I up, love I grew Elvis. Up Elvis. It's hard not to like Elvis. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the king of rockabilly. A lot of um. Um. Half Not, the viewers who the, are like 25 and under don't even know what the phrase rockabilly means. Remember the movie Rockadoodle? Rockadoo, what a day. I actually so, don't. Now okay. I feel like an idiot. Yeah, it was a um, uh, Blythe film, is his name? Blythe? Uh, he was the animator from Disney, broke off, and he did like Dragon, um, the Dragon Dungeon. Uh, dun- uh, God, I'm leaving my names again. He did the, uh, the video game series. Um, Dungeons Lair, I think it was called. There was two of them. Okay. Or Dragon's Lair. I think it was Dragon's, Dragon's Lair. I think it was I Dragon's, know what you're talking yeah, Dragon's about. Lair. Yeah, he did I remember those. that. He did um I think it's Bluth. His name is Bluth. Don Bluth. I believe that's his name. He did the the Secret of Nymph um t- American Tale, Fifel. Ah, yes. Um and he did um one of the most heart-wrenching tales of all time. And he did Rockadoodle. Okay. And it exists. 
<laughs> I'm Rock not. I'm not denying its existence. I just. I totally don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, Bluth was a, a fantastic animator. I don't know what is he. I don't know if he's still alive or anything. I'm sorry. I have no idea. I can't remember. But, um, anywho, since we are in nice sunny slot machine Vegas, uh, Let's I gamble. I brought the beer today. I did a gamble on this We're beer. Gamble. The reason why I gambled because I. Not only have we not tried this beer, we have no idea. We've never even heard of this brewery. We had to look up real quick where the where it's from. Um, I brought today Four Hands Brewing, uh, Resurrected, and it's an IPA. It's Resurrected Indian Pale Ale, India. I said Indian, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> well, it's. I mean. And it's the same thing, right? I mean, India, I'm just India. worried that in today's culture, somebody is going to get offended. Oh, don't give me all this PR bullshit right now, just because I mispresent something. Okay, um, I'm just saying we live in the age of being offended. Oh, look at this too. On the can of Resurrected, it gives you a pairing. It says it really pairs well with mild curry or grilled red meat. So this would be good with a steak. Right. So my problem about this grilled red meat picture is. I don't know if y'all can see that, but to I me... I can put an icon up. You can put the post, icon up. post. But to me, that does not look like... I'm presuming it's supposed to be a cow. It looks a lot more like a dog to me. It kind of <laughs> creeps me out. kind of creeps me out a little bit. Whoever did the art on it this... It doesn't... It, I, mm, okay, see, I think the thing is, you get away with it because of the association that it says meat, so you're like, oh, cow, cattle. But then, it's the, but then the if you, take, if the you take away the that... The tail is the only thing that yeah, does it. If you like, if away, that tail was not just hanging straight down, if it was out at all, I would be like... They want me to pair this beer with dog. They should have put some udders on this 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 cow. Agreed. This is that kind of has dog like features to it. Yeah. So we're drinking. This is good with dog. Pairs well <laughs> with dog. Way to go, St. Louis. Four Hands Breweries mm, in St. Louis needs yeah. more dog. Well, um, I found this on the shelf at Mariano's. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mariano's, it's one of the biggest. It's probably the biggest uh, grocery store chain now in Chicago. Yeah, and it's they taken have a, over. They have a fantastic um, um, brew selection there. Very big beer section there. And I've gotten, I think, like half the beers from the show on here. Um, so uh, I had no idea what it was. It has a stained glass window can, ish, you know, with hops, and then the window looks looks different. And uh, I have no idea what we're doing. So let's try it out. All right, Danny. Gamble. Give it the old crack. Yep. All right. I love that sound. Nastrovia. Cheers. It's an IPA. It definitely is. I'm oh no! Taste. Well, it's a it's a, a pale ale. Yeah, yeah. Well, India, India pale ale isn't IPA. IPA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I said that. I said that, uh, knowing I was messing up when I was saying it. You know what I'm saying? I said it anyway, but anyway. it was too late. The words yeah, were exiting late. your it was mouth. Too late, right? Um, and I was already correcting you. Okay. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I. I. Yeah. It's okay. I. I'm not blown away by it. No. No. It's drinkable. This is. Exa- it's just. It's a very standard IPA. Yeah. Hmm. Going in for another. Yeah. Well. Um, our thoughts on it will be on the last part of this podcast. You have to just either fast forward to the end, wait till the third part of the episode comes up on YouTube, or, um, you know, just enjoy the ride until we get there. Or go out and buy it and try it and for try yourself. yourself. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. You can, like, try it yourself, then give us some feedback, what we got right or wrong, in your opinion. But we'll let you know. Um, so, Danny. Yes? Right now, I feel that... My life is the episode of Seinfeld. Ooh, which one? Um, actually, it's my favorite episode. It's where Jerry is even Steven. Okay. Do you remember that episode? Vaguely. It's like, what happened was everything just kind of revolves around Jerry. That one of his friends, uh, like uh, uh, George becomes very successful while Lane becomes unsuccessful. She gets fired while George gets a job. Um, Elaine, um, excuse me, she tests her theory out 
she tests out this theory that he's even Steven and she tells Jerry, give me $20. And then Jerry gives her $20 and then she just throws it out the window and Jerry goes, well, you could have used a pencil for this. And then right after that scene, Jerry's about to leave his apartment, puts his jacket on and he finds $20 in his pocket. And then Kramer, you know, snaps, even Steven, you're even Steven. So why does this relate to me right now? Because I'm in this state of purgatory or the state of balance, I guess you could say. The yin and the yang is combined to a gray. So there's no black and white. It's just gray right now. Okay. Um, let's go. I'm just going over. I made a little list here to just show my back and forth right now. Do tell. Um so uh, my alma mater, uh, Bowling Green, had a big game on Tuesday, played their rival, and they were have a great winning streak, and they're doing awesome, and they lost their rival, Downer. Today, Saturday being big day college football, my most sports. hated team, my sports, my most hated team, Ohio the, State. Oh, don't shut up. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Ohio State oh, University. I hate that. They lost today. So that brought me. I hate them too. It's so fine. Th- so that brought, my, that brought me joy. Like my, the team I love lost the team i hate lost so it's like okay even steven right here's the thing now um last weekend i got my first workout in a, in a long time i worked out with jeff who, a couple of episodes ago he was on the show which you have to bring up a story i do have forgot. a story about jeff yes um jeff uh invited me to go out to the gym with him and i had started working out and it was great felt had a great work i felt great day later i realized i injured my shoulder Mm. I've had some tendonitis come back, and it's been hurting me. It's still hurting me right now to this day, and it's really, really frustrating because I got my workout. It felt good. Then I get injured. On a positive note, because I've suffered a shoulder injury before, I actually still have all my notes from PT, which I can pass on to you to help you heal the shoulder. Even Steven. Even Steven. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That was not planned, but I have injured my shoulder before, and it sucks. Yeah. Um, Here's And then I'll I'll have more, but I'll just end this right now. Uh, I'm leaving... Uh, and the reason why we're shooting tonight again, uh, I'm going to be out of town next week. I'm going to Florida to see uh, some family I haven't seen in like four or five years. And I'm going on a flight. I'm going to Florida. It's great. What happens today? Snowstorm in Chicago. My flight could be delayed on Monday. I don't know. But it's this even Stephen. Yes, I'm going to Florida to get away. But at the same time, it could slow down my plans. You know what I'm saying? This evenness there. I don't know if you see it that way. It seemed, But that's how I see it right now. So I just seen I, no, I agree with that. Okay. Like you're getting prepped to leave to Florida where it's going to be nice and warm and then all of a sudden Chicago's like, "Hey, here's some 25 degree weather wow. and some snow for yeah, you." Let's hold that back a yeah. little bit, Blake. Where just you in going? case you forgot what it felt like to be cold. Mm. Uh, Danny, I this is I wanted to pro- propose something to you that okay. this has only been the first snowfall this winter, okay? The Even, winter is coming. Oh god. I Two winters ago, the, the, 2000, the 2013 winter was an abomination. That that put so many scars on me physically and mentally that winter. Ah, uh, yes. Siberia. And 2014 was it was it was a bad winter. Not as bad as 2013, but 14 was bad. But it felt worse because of like the after effects of 13, you know, when it right. was cold. It just felt when the phrases Hashtag Siberia 2 and hashtag Polar Vortex 2 come into play the year after hashtag Siberia and hashtag Polar Vortex were born. That's not usually a good back-to-back winter no, scenario. No, 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 no. And now we've had our first snowfall, and I'm just already like, oh, screw this. Screw this. And my proposal, Danny, is Want to set a I, bunch I, of I, random fires, you, right? Oh, my God. Put the city on fire and get warm again. That's where my head was. Where was your head going? Um, I want to move out of. I want to leave Chicago. In in the future, I'm not saying today or tomorrow or next year. I'm just saying we should go to California. I want to move to California. Okay, you want to go to California sometime? Yeah, I need a absolutely. roommate because it's expensive as hell out there. It is expensive, but I I I don't want to do many more of these winters. I know I'm really getting burned out on them. I, I'm not, and you know people from Chicago who've been their whole life in the Midwest like oh you're just a pussy and do this. I'm sorry, I don't care. I, I don't care. I hate this. I am I am and, and, and it affects me mentally and I get sad and that the, the C- S A D you know the seasonal seasonal affective disorder. disorder sure. I, I, I just combat don't. that with I vitamin hate D. The freaking winter i used to like it growing literally up. that science Ugh. 
Let's go to California, dude. Let's just go. Let's just go. We've been on the one, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. California, here we come, right, right back, back where we started from. from. Sorry. That no, just, it I felt bro- right. That felt I right. sang with you, buddy. Yeah. Little buddy. I said, I was been talking a lot, so... um I don't. I, I threw a lot at you, either, so just I that's don't know. fine. It happens. The winner. It's it. It just it came all over everything <laughs> real fast. Nobody could stop Ugh. it. Uh, I could throw out some Game of Thrones spoilers, but I'm not going to. Uh, later on down the road, when we're doing this show, I will give spoiler alerts before I talk about anything. Um, <laughs> to kind of segue <laughs> into a, our next couple of segments, uh, you had mentioned that I had a story about Jeff's appearance uh, ah, yes, from we, his from his guest star spot on the yes, show. Yes. Uh, I was watching that and I found it as my hair is very long right now. For those of you who don't know me, this is long. It gets this real crazy like 80s wave to it. And you can kind of just see like I look like a guy who should be a villain on Miami Vice or something. Anyways, it's coming up for my time to go get a haircut. And you asked Jeff uh, about hairstylists and who he goes to get his haircut with. And I died laughing because... My answer would have paralleled his to a T. It were exactly the same. Um, Jeff goes once a month, every three to four weeks, to the suburbs to get his hair cut. I do the exact same thing. Yeah, in uh, the because, same area too. Which because is this, I don't trust to very many people. So when I find somebody who does it and does it right, I just stick to that person. So Angie, who cuts my hair oh, currently. Oh, Angie. Good old my, Angie. Cuts my hair currently. Uh, we used to work together back in the day. Um, she cuts my hair currently, and it's just one of those scenarios where every single time that I go to get a haircut, I just feel like it looks continuously looks better and better, which is a really vain thing to say, but I'm a very vain person. So every time she gets done with my hair, I'm just <laughs> like, so damn, vain. you just did an awesome job on my hair. This looks great. All right, now here's the magical question. Yes. If you don't feel comfortable revealing this information, I understand. Sure. What, what's the price range we're talking here? Price range we are talking about, uh, she charges about 20 bucks a haircut. I always leave a very, very nice tip. You're, but you do that with everyone. I do that with everyone, but I also do that because she and I are friends, and she does excellent work. I believe And, and she's the only person that I trust with my hair okay. currently. I've even told her that if I ever get famous for any point in time and reason, that I'm going to pay her to travel around with me and do my hair personally. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Um, now, okay, I have to talk to Jeff okay. because if you guys both are living in the city and you're both going to Neighborville, Aurora, wherever, I can't remember exactly where Jeff goes. If you guys are going to the same place by the same person, I think I have to follow suit because two <laughs> of my good friends are doing, going to the same barber and they're traveling like 30 miles to get their hair cut. I think I am going to have to do this because this might be the most, the be, the greatest barber ever. Or stylist. What are they? I don't know. Stylist. Stylist. She stylist. technically is a stylist. Stylist. Yeah. I, um, I remember, I liked this, you don't do this anymore, but I, I get it. But I liked when you did the faux hawk. Ah, I, yeah. liked, I liked your faux hawk. Yeah. I rocked that for a long time. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, but yeah, we, that's the thing is, like, my hair's parted like this now. You're parted. Everyone's has the parted hair like this now. It's like the yeah. style, I guess. I don't know. Well, it's kind of funny. The way my hair is cut, I actually still could put it into a faux hawk if I wanted to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I enjoyed the faux hawk. I thought it was a good style. I couldn't have a I punk could've, rock look I for a minute. A, I did a, uh, a faux hawk. Well, I don't know if you call it a faux hawk. I don't know what you call it. I guess it was technically a mohawk. It was like. Um, Kind of like Native American style uh, mohawk, where I got my head shaved pretty damn low, like pretty damn low, and then I had like a fuzz in the middle. You know, do you remember that? Do you remember I did that for like one time? Yes, it was like two thousand. I don't know. It was like six years ago. I did it, and I was just, I want a mohawk. I want to try it, and it happened. (laughs) And um, I got it. I think I had a lot of laughs, and people close to me said, "Don't ever do it again." (laughs) (laughs) It's always family. Family's like, no, always. Do that. It's always family. the one time that I shaved my head, my mom almost killed me. Really? Yes. When did you do that? Oh God, that was ages ago. Oh yeah? yeah. Yeah. Did you do it yourself, or you got it shaved? No, no, no. I got it shaved. Oh okay. Yeah. I don't. Jeez, was it in high school? Do I? Would I remember that? I was really young when it happened. Maybe like, mm, probably like eighth grade freshman year. 
Okay, so maybe I, I probably, yeah, I probably wouldn't remember that then if you did. Yeah, you can ask uh, Vin about this next time you see him. Vin, my oldest brother, who he's, might there's a there is this slim of a chance if we that, can pull it off schedule wise that the the elder Brahas, the 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 the, the, the Star Wars prophet. <laughs> Might be on this show. We're we're seeing it's schedules, it's holidays, it's really tough. But there there could be a minutia of a chance of him to be on the show. And but he will still make fun of it to this day because I was such a big fan of Vin Diesel and Pitch Black. That's why I did it. <laughs> you loved Vin. You loved Vin back in the day. I think you still do. Yeah. Hey, it was badass in Pitch Black. That was an awesome movie. That was the start, man. Yeah. That was the start. Like, what I still to this day, I defend Pitch Black. I think it's still a great sci-fi movie. Yeah. The main main reason why is because it was a start a bunch of nobodies, and it was a great simple plot. Yeah. It was like guys, people stranded on a, a, an alien planet, aliens trying to kill them, and no no big names. Like eventually, a lot of those people became bigger names. But and the the what would be villain in the film turns out to be the hero. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, 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 Pitch Black was great, and I, I missed. The, I didn't even see the last uh, Pitch Black. They movie. were all pretty, pretty eh yeah. after that. I had the I, first one was amazing. I, I was actually okay with the Chronicles of Riddick. I mean, yeah. I, I got bashed, but I'm like, I'm, I'm really entertained by this. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I don't mind. I, I really didn't mind it. I, I don't care. <laughs> but the last one, I, I it kind of just came and went, and the, it was like it just appeared in theaters for a weekend and disappeared. I didn't, Have you seen that one, the last one? Yes, I did see the last one. It was on HBO momentarily. Ah. And just because I know that I have a couple of my friends that listen to this that talk about Vin Diesel, I have to drop the name Pat Ramke. <laughs> Good old Pat. Biggest Vin Diesel fan of all time. Strindle. That's for Vinay because I know Vinay is listening to Strindle. this. Vinay is listening to this? Vinay listens to this on a regular basis. Hi, Vinay. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Thanks for listening. Subscribe already, will you? If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Damn it. Danny, we got to wrap this up and go on yes. to our topics. Um, round two coming round, up. Round two. Um, so, in short, um, it's winter, and I need to go to Naperville, thirty miles away, to get my hair cut. Is how I understand it. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. All right. 